In this video, I want to show you how you can implement a simple forward mode automatic differentiation framework in Julia with operator overloading. Let us start by defining a simple function for which we want to take the derivative of. So let's say for instance, x times x, so x squared. I'm executing this function live in the Julia REPL session here. Then let's define an x point, let's say for instance 3.0, at which we want to query that function. And of course, f of x point will be 9, as 3 squared is 9. Then we could potentially derive the function by hand to compute an f prime of x. And that will be a function that is 2 times x, as this is the symbolic derivative of x squared. And then evaluating f prime at x point would obviously give us 6. But how can we become a little bit lazy and apply automatic differentiation to this? For this, we need to do a bit of preparation. First, I will import the base package of Julia, and then we have to define a custom type. Here, I want to implement forward mode AD in the sense of a dual number. So I will define a dual number as a struct, and this dual number should be parameterized on a type T. A dual number consists of a real part, which is of type T, so for instance, float 64, float 32, but potentially also vectors. Here we will just look at the scalar mode. If you're also interested in the vector mode, then take a look at the next video. The dual number then also has a dual part. You can think of a dual number somehow like a complex number in that we extend the real valued numbers by an additional dimension. The dual numbers have the additional constraint that the dual dimension squared is always zero. Whereas if you have the imaginary dimension squared, you will get minus one. Okay, so that's a dual number. So far, so good. Our goal is to use dual numbers in order to propagate tangent information. The function in order to propagate that, I want to call this push forward, should take a function f as well as a primal position, which should be a real valued number and a tangent position, which is also a real valued number. This push forward, if you've never heard of that, then take a look at the videos I've linked up here. It's basically the primitive of forward mode automatic differentiation. And here how it works is basically that we create an input which is given as the dual number of the primal and the tangent. So we will save the primal in the real valued component and the tangent in a dual component. And then we will apply the function f to the input and thereby performing arithmetic operations of any kind for which we will have the operations overloaded. We will do that in a second. And then the output will obviously be also a dual number. And from this dual number, we can extract the output of the primal as well as the output of the tangent. So we will call this primal out, which is the output accessed at the real. And the tangent out is the output accessed at the dual. And our push forward should now return the primal out and the tangent out, and that's it. And by the help of a push forward, we can implement a derivative operator, which is kind of like syntactic sugar here. It also takes a function as well as an evaluation point that's called as x. This is the real, the position at which we want to query the derivative. And it does so by first setting the tangent of it to be the one element of x and then computing a push forward by applying it. But we are not interested in the primal out, which would be the computation of f, but rather in the tangent out. So let's use a placeholder and then call this df by dx, which is the push forward applied to the function f with the primal being x and the tangent being v. And then we can return our df by dx and end our function. So let's execute them. So let's first use base, then do this dual number struct, the push forward, as well as the d derivative. Then we can call the derivative on the function f together with our x point, apply that. And here we see, hmm, well, that does not work yet. And that's because we have an operation that is not yet overloaded for the dual numbers. So what we will be doing is define this operation and for this we will access the base package and say base dot and then colon star in order to overload the multiplication operator. 
and we want to overload it such that if it is applied on x with a dual number and y with a dual number. So in other words, if two dual numbers are multiplied and then what we get is this dual number where we do x dot real times y dot real and for the dual component we get x dot real times y dot dual plus x dot dual times y dot real. Let's execute that and now we have a multiplication overloaded and now the derivative should work and you see we will get 6. Let's look at a slightly more complicated case where we have a function, let's say it's 3 times x squared plus the sine of x. Evaluating that function on x point gives us 27 point something. Let's also implement the prime by doing some symbolic differentiation. So what we will get is take the derivative of x squared, which gives us 2 and 2 times 3 is 6 times x. So 6 times x. And then the derivative of sine is of course cosine. And then let's apply g prime on x point. We will see 17.01. Then we can call the derivative function on g at x point and see, well, I'll take a bit. And here we go. So there is no implementation of a function that multiplies a float with a dual number for a float. So let's also overload that. And that's relatively straightforward. So we will do base dot star of with x and let it be any possible type, but y being a dual number. And then let me first maybe implement a convenience constructor for the dual number. And this will be a function which just takes x and then it will construct a dual number such that it put, puts x into the real part, but zeros out the dual part. Here we go, let's execute that. And then basically we can simply implement this scalar multiplication with a dual number as being a dualized version of x in which the dual part is set to zero, and then this one being multiplied with y. Let's execute that and go back and see what are we missing now? So there is no method for the sign of a dual number and that's a bit more tricky. And for this, let's implement sign of set being a dual number. And this might not look as straightforward right now. I will have a video linked up here if you want more detail on why it is the way it is. But how it looks like is we first take the sign of the real part of set that's relatively straightforward, so we propagate the solution as is. But for the dual part, we will take the cosine of the real part and then multiply it with the dual part. And maybe just briefly why it is, it's because of a linearization. Basically, this is the atomic Jacobian vector product we have for the sine evaluation. And here we go. Then we can get down and execute or problem again and see now we are missing the addition and the addition is probably the easiest that we have. So let's say base dot plus of x being a dual number and y being a dual number. And this is just we add the real components. So x dot real plus y dot real and x dot dual plus y dot dual. Let's execute that. And now we should have all the primary components down and executed. And then we get the derivative value, which is exactly the same as our symbolic derivative that we have here. And bottom line is that you could now define any scalar valued computation from a scalar to a scalar, as long as you have all the basic operations that are called implemented or overloaded for your dual number. Feel free to also take a look at the next video where we will extend that to vector mode forward AD, which is rather straightforward and employs a simple trick in order to cleverly use the scalar AD here. A big thanks to all the patrons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you will find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more awesome content on automatic differentiation that you might be interested in. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos.